Decent, so you know what that means. Pop Dust Presents. I am your host, Decent, and today, Pop Dust Presents is brought to you by the good people at Roar Organics. Shout out to Roar for providing us with this tasty beverage on set today. But from one good thing to an even better thing, we have Stella Cole joining us live today on the Pop Dust set. Woo! <laughs> yeah, Stella, thank you so much for stopping by today on this Wednesday afternoon and joining us and sitting next to Decent, your best friend. <laughs> Decent is my best friend. There you go. <laughs> I did not tell her to say this before we went live. Not in the least bit. Not in the least bit. But <laughs> once again, thank you for stopping by and give the audience a little bit about yourself. Um, address, um, social security number. Uh, just um, a little bit. Yeah, any recent pay stubs, <laughs> um, blood type, all that stuff. <laughs> Okay, well first off, I just want to say thank you so much for having me, um, especially as a new and upcoming artist. This really means so much to me, so I really appreciate it. Um, just a little bit about me. So, just a little bit about myself. Um, once again, my name is Stella Cole, and um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, actually a small town on the outskirts of Atlanta. Ooh. Um, yes, it's called Peachtree City. It's a little golf cart community. It's very cute. Um, and, you know, growing up, I was listening to all kinds of music. I got into music um, for real, for real, when I was about 16, 17 years old, but I always loved it growing up. Um, my dad loves music as well, and he had me listening to everything from, you know, Led Zeppelin to Run DMC. He had, it, he had all of it covered. And um, kind of growing up, I naturally started to gravitate towards anything remotely doo-wop. Um, so like the Beach Boys, the Cordettes, the Mamas and the Papas, even Elvis. Um, just anything that kind of has that doo wop feel to it. And there's just something so just charismatic and charming about the simplicity in those songs. Um, and I just loved it so much growing up. And then I also grew up as an athlete. That's kind of what I did my whole life before I got into music. And um, so I also love hip hop. It was something that I grew up listening to, you know, before every practice and every game. It's just kind of, I feel like what my teammates and I kind of grew up listening to together. And so when I got into songwriting when I was about 16 years old, I it was kind of natural that, you know, doo-wop and hip hop sort of meshed together when I started songwriting. And it definitely took a lot of hard work and developing to really, really shape my sound. But hopefully, you know, it, it comes off and people can hear my influences in my music. But I love what I do and music is, my lifestyle, it's everything to me, so it's a little bit about who I am. Wow. Um, <laughs> you just gave us so much and such. I know, that was a lot. No, it was, it was, it was good. Um, <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. You're just. Emotional on set. Yeah, I mean, that, that's such an awesome story, and I don't even think we could continue with this interview, but I'm contracted <laughs> to be here another leaves. 20 minutes, so I guess we can make the most of it. So all these different nuances that you have that allowed you to become the great artist today making music that is out of this world and speaking of out of this world we call that a segue in the biz you have a song called ufo i do have a song called ufo i actually released it um it was june the first um and it's that song is a, such a such a special song to me because that was actually the first song i wrote where i was like holy crap if I were to be a piece of music, I would be this song. And from there, you know, that was kind of the birth of Stella Cole and the birth of my sound. Um, and yeah, it was so fun getting to put that out just because I've been writing for so, so long and just to be able to release it and have people listening to my music, finally, it was the most refreshing, rewarding feeling ever. And um, I'll tell you what it's about. Because it is a little, when, when I say UFO and when you hear UFO, you're probably thinking, you know, it's about spaceships, aliens, unidentified flying objects. But which, guess what? Plot twist. We tricked you. It is not <laughs> about that. Um, it's actually about an ex-boyfriend that I had that did not treat me as well as he said he was going to. Um, so he showed up lied to my face. And I was like, all right, I'm going to write a song about this. Um, and so the title UFO actually does not mean, you know, spaceships and UFOs. It means I've been thinking, why don't you F off? So that's a little bit about what that song's about and what it means to me. Hey, jerk. <laughs> you didn't treat my best friend the way you should have. 
And now she's here on Pop Dust Presents, about to rock your face off with a song about you. Congratulations, yeah, you played yourself. Yeah, watch out, he's, he's coming for you. Definitely. <laughs> or maybe Dan, because he took the song, which is more so of like a, I want to say poppy, like, you know, new wave sort of sound, and you managed to slow it up and make it more reggae based. I'm, Almost it sounds like, you know. That's a huge compliment, thank you. At the end, you know, with, with the little riff at the end, I almost got my sister Nancy on the bum, bum, dum, dum, beat up, <laughs> bum. I was like, oh, okay, we're rocking, yes. we're rocking, but sounded amazing. Thank and you so much. So how did you make the transition, like, you know, with this acoustic version of the song from it going to the, its original sound to this more melodic, slow down version? So I'm actually glad you asked that. Um, so I actually wrote this song, you know, in the studio mm -hmm. with a beat kind of going on first and so the studio version was actually kind of what happened before the acoustic version and so it was cool because you know I was like how how do I pull this off acoustically because it is such a track heavy song mm -hmm. um, but that was also kind of you know what made it so fun and exciting um, and I think that I mean it took a lot of practice <laughs> because I didn't quite know exactly where to start with it mm -hmm. um, but once I kind of got the hang of it I found that you know the slower slightly more soulful side of it was definitely the way I wanted to go mm -hmm. um, and I actually think that it's, it's kind of a nice contrast between the acoustic version versus the full-blown studio version so. absolutely like both sound amazing and thank you so you know, much hope you don't take this as you know an offense but hearing that rendition and the way you sung it kind of reminded me of like Josh Stone a little bit thank you so much <laughs> it's just just amazing amazing so you grew up you know in the south pretty much and yep. me pretty much having a sense of the south being kind of like a hotbed for like newer music what was it like coming from you know an area where there's so many different sounds because you have the tradition of like you know acts like Ray Charles and now mm -hmm. even with like you know the hip-hop scene being dominated right. by you know the Atlanta sound what what's it like coming from a place like that and being a musician and how does that impact your your writing and just your overall approach to music so it's interesting because since I grew up on the outskirts the town that I grew up in actually music wasn't a huge thing mm -hmm. um, I was kind of one of the only people that did it, so I really would look to the city of Atlanta kind of as an example and something that I really, really wanted to follow just because I think that the music scene of Atlanta is something really, really weird and quirky, but in the best way. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, from listening to all those artists, I it was just so cool because I, I think I really started to pick up on... That's also another reason that I have, you know, I'm influenced by hip hop music is because I would look to those artists so often mm. when I was writing just because I thought it was so special and cool what they were doing. Um, and I sometimes like I get proud to say that, you know, I came from around Atlanta just because <laughs> the music is so quirky and different there. It 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 definitely did influence my sound a lot. Is there anybody in the current music scene you could probably see yourself doing a song with that maybe from Atlanta? <sighs> from Atlanta. I wouldn't say from Atlanta specifically right now, mm -hmm. um, but one person that I would love to collaborate with that I would say is in the hip hop scene is Drum. I love Drum so much. Love Drum. He's very very good. Love Drum. His song Cash Machine is like <laughs> one of like oh, one so. of my favorite hip hop songs I've listened to in a long time just because of like the crazy piano side of it. And then it's I don't know. I just think it's a really special song. I mean, a lot of people might not know he's from Atlanta, technically. Is he actually from Atlanta? No, I'm talking about um, well, who I was about to say. Technically, he's from Atlanta. Um, Donald Glover. Okay. True. Travis Gambino. True. You he's guys could so do, talented. You know, I could see him doing you know his yeah. own version of UFO. You know? That would be so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Donald, I know you watch the show because you're a huge fan. Make sure you hit my girl Stella up and we can make this happen. You know, get on a train before it leaves the station, man. Oh, my goodness. So is this your first time in New York? It's not my first time in New York, but I've actually been here for three weeks, coming up on four weeks. So it's it's definitely my first trip to New York that's been longer than a two to three day span. And how's it been? been? Oh, it's been so amazing. I don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love New York. I think that there's something very, very magical about the hustle and bustle of the city. Um, I just feel like everyone's going places and I, I feel more productive here than anywhere else. Yeah, so I never want to stop working. Yeah, so it's like a contrast between, you know, the 
the more slow, steady pace of, you know, the South, and then you kind of have the, like you said, the hustle and bustle here, you know. Right. Would you take any of the experiences that you experience here and be able to apply that to any upcoming music or anything? Because, you know, it's a very inspiring city. There's songs, oh, a, a whole bunch of songs very, about them. It is a very, very inspiring city. Um, I definitely think I would be able to, you know, just from, like, being so busy here and writing with a whole bunch of different people, I definitely say that I can learn a lot and I've figured out, you know, even more sides to what I can do as an artist. So I definitely think that there's a lot that I can take away from being in this city. And just the inspiration that comes from walking down the streets of the city. There's nothing like it. And I'm, I'm really excited to, you know, just get back in Nashville and in the studio in Atlanta and just start working and writing from the inspiration of Dante here, because there's a lot of it. Make sure you dedicate that Grammy to the great city of New York, and we could say she's one of our <laughs> own, technically, because we inspired this amazing body of work. No other place in the world, nothing but the best. <laughs> but you have an EP coming out. I do. It's actually dropping this Friday. This so Friday. very, very, very soon. Um, and the EP is actually called Throwing Up Butterflies, after my second single that I released about week and a half ago um and this ep is just i i can't wait for it to come out i've been like i said earlier with ufo i've been you know in the studio for so long just writing and writing and writing to find you know those songs that perfectly represent me as a person absolutely music. um and i really feel like this ep throwing up butterflies does just that yeah. and i hope that you know people that listen to it and my audience and my fans i really hope that they're not only like influenced and inspired by the music, but they can get a taste of who I am as a person and connect with me as well. Absolutely. That's why I do what I do. Because I love connecting with other people. And with this being your first project, you also want, to, want this to be more so where people have a reference point of who you Absolutely. are. So as you grow from here, people can go look back at this piece of work when Absolutely. you first emerged on the scene and people can go, yeah, that was the one that put on a map this is the one that we love not to say that you're not going to create incredible music but your first project is always your baby oh, it's, so it's i can only totally imagine you know that there's a lot of emotions just running through you know your head and you know your heart right now getting ready yeah. for this release some would say that you might throw up butterflies <laughs> 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 Don't ask how he does it, he just does it. <laughs> but <laughs> give the audience a little bit of what the meaning behind the title is because it's a very, very intriguing title. I think yes. deciphering it, you know, I had my own conclusion, but what, what's the meaning behind it? Yeah, that? so this, um, the EP title, Throwing Out Butterflies, it, once again is the name of one of the songs that will be on the EP that I actually released as a single um, about a week and a half ago. and. The song itself is a song that I wrote when I had first started talking to this guy that I really, really liked. Um, and the whole song is kind of constructed around those weird little feelings that you get in your head when you're first starting to fall in love with a person. So like, for example, you're looking into a bowl of SpaghettiOs and you know how you've got like all the little letters in the soup and stuff? Mm -hmm. It's like spelling your name out next to the person's name that you're like in love with. It's just like crazy weird little things like that that you never really think to put into a song. Um, and ultimately, the whole song is just about, you know, not only those little feelings that you get in your head when you're thinking about someone, but it's, it's just that ultimate feeling of just kind of, not anxious in a bad way, but anxious with excitement. And you literally feel like you're going to throw up butterflies because of how excited you are to be talking to this person and falling in love with this person. So that's, you know, that's what the song itself is about. And I just thought it was a really, really unique EP title that kind of captures everything and, you know, how excited I am about you know just releasing my music to the world, and so I, I feel like it kind of perfectly summed up not only that song but the whole EP itself. See, that explanation makes way more sense than what I had in my head. <laughs> I just assumed that you love the caterpillars, and I, you know what? <laughs> eventually, you know, the consumption just got to you so much that they stayed form butterflies, and you just couldn't take anymore, and you just. I can see how you would maybe think I that. mean, it's, it's a very, very <laughs> logical conclusion to come to, you know, because I'm pretty sure everybody very else logical. thought the same thing. So Very, very logical. But, you know, from an artistic standpoint, I guess your, your definition is kind of cool. It kind of works. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean, if the label loves it, I guess. If, if right? they love it, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. 
perfect explanation, and that's something I feel like a lot of people can relate to because that's a feeling that never goes away no matter right. how old or how young you are, no matter where you come from when you're talking about new love and, you know, just even just anxiousness and excitement about anything. You know, Absolutely. You do get yeah. that feeling that, you know, you're going to throw up butterflies. So, of course, people are going to gravitate to the literal explanation, but once they see and hear the whole body of work, I think they can draw their own interpretation and relate to it in a certain way that, you know, makes them want to throw butterflies when it comes to certain things. Yeah, absolutely. That was kind of another thing I was excited about, you know, writing it. I was like, not only is this, once again, just so relatable to me, I was like, everyone gets this feeling, right? Like, I'm not the only crazy one. Like, everyone gets this feeling at some point, you know, whether it's someone you're falling in love with or whether it's something you're passionate about in general, you know, it could be anything. Everyone experiences that feeling no matter how old you get. And so that was another thing that made me really, really excited about the whole concept. Like the feeling you felt when you found out that I was interviewing you. Yes, my best friend. <laughs> Thank you. See, guys, I told you, I'm a very, my very likable friend. individual. And no, I did not tell her to say that once again no, before we went live didn't do such we a thing. We are like best friends. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> we, we, we go down to, to that place and we, the place. We, we do that thing and then we go to that other place. Yeah, but, but that ne one. Next to the place that we don't like because that's no, what friends oh, do. No, we don't like, no, we don't like that one. <laughs> we don't go there. We, we do not go there. <laughs> we don't go there. So, so, this EP, new video, this show, you just have so much going on right now and you have an amazing best friend right by your side through this whole entire wacky journey you but, got me through everything thank uh, you look i'm just a reflection of the company that i keep <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. so what else can we expect from stella cole coming up in the future you know you can just expect to see more of who i am and what i'm about and you know whether it's you know the music that i'm starting to work on now for you know after the EP or if it's just you know me posting and communicating with people you can just expect to see the craziness that comes with you know being an artist and you know what I do and why I love what I do so awesome yeah. so it looks like we have a piece where can the people find you at on social media shows um, facts um, carrier pigeon um, how can people get in Everything. touch with you so you can follow me on all social media platforms at Call Me Stella Cole on Twitter and Instagram and then Facebook at Stella Cole. And um, that's where I pretty much post everything there is that you're going to need to know about my life and my shows and my music. So, And then check me out on Spotify, Apple Music, all streaming services, all music platforms. Well, I'm everywhere. She pretty much summed it up. Make sure <laughs> if you're in the New York City area, you guys go check her out tomorrow night at Baby's All Right, All Right. And make sure you guys, please, I don't ask for much, except that you stay here every Wednesday and sit through me interviewing guests and making them completely uncomfortable. That's all I ask. <laughs> but I'm asking that you guys go and get her EP on Friday called Throwing Up Butterflies. Not throwing up gang signs, throwing <laughs> up butterflies. Oh. Make sure you guys go get it. Stella, thank you very much. From Thank all of so us much. here at Pop Dust Presents and the lovely people at Raw Organic. Make sure you go get you some. I'm Decent, and this has been another installment of Pop Dust Presents. And make sure that you always keep it dusty. <laughs> <laughs>